Hey folks, this is IOE throwing back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is Extreme Unicorn Warfare. He is in the T95 FV240. Or, yeah. 4201. Sorry, the Chieftain. Um. Not actually seen this thing up close before. Also, this is not glyphs! Right? I mean, there are glyphs. But this is not glyphs! I didn't know there was other maps in this game. <laughs> Sorry, we just we've been so, playing so much on Cliff lately. Um, okay, so before I get too far into this game, I was supposed to put this up a long time ago. I'm sorry, Extreme. I I really meant to. I uh, I'm pretty sure I started to record this a long time ago, and then for whatever reason, it ended up not going up on the channel, and I didn't realize it, and so. I was just digging through emails just now, found that one. <gasps> Oops! <laughs> Basically, it is, is how this all happened. Um, sorry, Extreme. If you've been wondering where it's been, it, it's been in the back of my email box and not not being sent out because I'm an idiot occasionally. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, tier ten game fjords. He's in the uh, the chieftain. It's pretty tank that I don't know much about but does look pretty cool doesn't it? um that was one other thing I wanted to, to say um oh yes I've been asked uh about my streaming uh a couple times and I am gonna try and get back into it now that I'm no longer doubling over and coughs every like 10 or 15 minutes I do want to get back into streaming and doing that all again um so Hopefully, by the time this video goes live, I'll also be streaming, and um, I'm also going to do one on Thursday, and we're going to see about maybe Saturday, but that would have to be short, because that's my anniversary weekend, so, yeah. Okay. That all being said, let's get into the game. So this thing is great at being held down, and... Uh, He's just gonna pop over this ridge and try and put one in thick. Oh, uh, unfortunately, not able to. Now, yeah, okay, so he's firing all gold. I'm gonna assume that's because he's trying to three mark this thing. Um, I can't see any other reason for it, doing it in a, a standard game. 270 penetration is not amazing, especially against you know E100s and Type Fives. But uh, it's still something he should be able to work with. Though he needs to find weak points. Mm. And twice now he's bounced one off there. He's not going to be able to put one into the uh, radar. But he can go straight through the front of the U100 as long as it's flat facing. If it's uh, two angles, he's going to just bounce off there. As he keeps doing with that poor WZ. Um, Though actually, I don't think anything's actually taken pot shot as yet. Um, they keep taking pot shot. They keep taking pot shots to stuff around us, which I guess is for the best. Well, he's learned his lesson. He's not going to keep shooting at that little target. Okay, so this this <laughs> unfortunately there is this this position in every. World tanks game when you're a heavy tank, when you just end up slugging against other heavy tanks, and it's just a wet noodle fight. It's not particularly interesting to cast or watch, I assume, unless he was doing real damage, which unfortunately he's not. Though, if that shell had connected where he wanted it to, that shell was quite likely going to go in, as that was definitely in the cheek of the uh, the Type Five's armor, which is a vulnerable spot. Um, see, you can see how many times we've hit that Kapoa. Just unfortunately, haven't gone in yet. Uh, no, not yet. But the E100 uh, has been dropped so long. Oh, yeah! There we go. Thank you, W said. We can't go through your turret, but, you know, go ahead and give us <laughs> your drive wheel. We'll put our shell through that. Ooh. And then putting a shell into the Type 5, though. I actually thought we had actually connected with a friendly for a second there. 
So when he's shooting that, that VK, by the way, he's shooting the back of it. Right underneath the turret, there's this tiny little weak spot. Uh, because the ar armor actually flattens it right then. And so if you shoot any of the rest of that tank, you're going to bounce. But right underneath the turret is um, basically a ring where the armor will flatten out based on which way you're looking at. And so if you're shooting the right spot, you'll just keep going through. Um, yeah, unfortunately the face of that Type 5 is going to be difficult for Ben if he's not careful about it. Though if he's not careful, he's getting a shot in the back by... Oh. Well, that's the second... <laughs> the second Amorak we've seen in this game. Um, this one, though, is in a great position. It's going to let us get hauled down behind this corpse. Um, though it looks like he's not going to take that seriously and just going to keep pushing on. Looking for the pull on the VK, finds it, and then continues moving. Actually dodging the shell from the object 907 because he continues moving. Though it does get put a shot into the 907. Looks like he's not going to get put a sec one in because it's just going to duck below the ridge line and calmly walk away. Now instead of walking out into the open where he's going to get shot at by the STRV or anything else that is sitting up here, he's in fact going to swing around all the way back to base because he realizes base is completely open. Yep, ammo 7 is already capping out or at least passing through. It was a dumb idea from the 907 though to announce his presence by passing through the base. Um, TVP is way over there. But the 907 is right in front of us somewhere. Firing on the move, he's not, probably not going to do anything to him. Um, and thankfully though, he's low enough from this ridge line. Not to be shot by guys across the way. And he's just going to come up here and he's going to identify the 907. Oh, 113 also back there. Looking for 113 to get shot by the the uh, 1A3 Death Star behind us, which is exactly what happens. Doesn't take off all the 113 south, of course, but it takes off a significant amount. And now that we know where the object 907 is, we know what his health is, we can be a bit more aggressive when pushing up on him. Especially since, ooh, for a second there, he couldn't see us up until the TVP actually pushed up and got us into proxy spying range. And the TVP is going to try something, but um, all somebody has to do is land a shell near him, and that's going to be the end of the TVP. TVP is, in fact, trying something. 113 is just fire. That means we can push up on the TVP, get behind him, take him out of this game, and then proceed on to the 113, who must realize now that he's in a bad position. He starts trying to side scrape off this wall instead of continuing the cap. And that's exactly what we want because um, if he's in an isolated position, we can get, get to him much easier. Our enemy artillery is still in play, something I'd forgotten about until just now as the Batchat fires what's hopefully his last shot of the clip. They were more likely the first shell equipped based on the fact that we hadn't seen fire from him before. 113 is just rolling back and away. He knows he's going to have trouble with, uh, dealing with the extreme, especially when the extreme tracks him. We're going to reload. Oop! And normally we reload before the guy could fix his track, but of course, in this situation, the guy just uses the repair kit and he's back up and on his way. Pushing forward, we're going to meet the other chieftain on the enemy team. He was on less health than us. Yes. So that is good. Uh, we're going to speed this up a little bit because oh, there's no way we're going to find anybody until we round this corner and get into range of that STRV. And uh, n none of us want to sit here and watch him not do anything. So now we are in range of the STRV. Assuming he's paying attention, he should be spotting us now or fairly soon. Or, assuming he's still there. He may have moved. That thing is fast enough that he could definitely have gotten down to the peninsula on the 9 line by now. And he could be defending from a toy precision. But no! In fact, he is right there. We spot all the damage on him. And he dies. Switching over to uh, HE. No reason why not to. It's going to be cheaper and it's going to do more damage. And it's just the ammunition type you want when running against artillery. Oh, um, okay, so he's gonna sit right there and he's gonna miss his shell and we're gonna miss our shell. 
And we're gonna reload just after he does, so he's gonna get a second shell at us. Oh no! He we reload first. Okay. That uh was actually quite a tight um timing. Assuming of course that he wasn't doing a full reload. Um I don't think that was that many seconds between his second and third shells or first and second. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Um Good job from the 183 Death Star. Um, the fire support go crashing back into our base was really, really key. And without that, it would have been a much different battle. One that we probably would have lost. But yeah, great job. And notice the, the uh, request is already out. We'll see if he gets invited to platoon. Or if he joins the platoon and we get something good out of it. Let's jump over and see his bad results. Ace Tanker. Spotter, Bruiser, Demo Expert, Fighter, Fire for Effect. 20 Bonds! Makes up for the fact that he didn't get anything else out of this. Um, it was well done. And definitely deserved. I believe this is um, his first ever game. Or sorry, second battle in the Chieftain. 1300 base experience. 5000 damage. Carries the team. And just walks it home across the finish line. Um, anytime you can do this, it's a great game and it's a great battle. Well done, sir. I would have liked to seen a fight at the end between these two, but that's just not the way it happened. And uh, either way, it was well done and well played. Thank you so much, Extreme, for sending this in. Again, I'm sorry it's late. Please forgive me. And uh, I need more games from you guys, so send them in, please. And in the meantime, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. This is IOE Throughout.